right, welcome back to the first chapter of uh, the epistle of James. We're looking at James's uh, admonition, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. So there's a real good promise there, you know, <laughs> that's great. Do you lack wisdom? Well, now you know how to get it. Ask God. However, there is a condition, and this is what we talked about in the last segment. Uh, verse number six is where I want to start this time. But he must ask in faith without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. That's a great word picture. Look at, in your mind's eye uh, at the, you know, the ocean under the, you know, the, the, the wind uh, blowing across it and the waves being produced. It's not a, a stable picture, is it? And that's what uh, James is saying. That, that's what, uh, that, that, that pictures the person who's a doubter. Um, and, and he goes on even further, it almost seems a little bit harsh in verse number eight, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Okay, and that does seem maybe a little bit uh, harsh, but yet that's the word of the Lord through James, so let's swallow and take it in. Um, so when you ask in faith, uh, what what do you do? Well, that means you're asking with uh, expectation. You're not saying, well, Lord, you know, uh, boy, I don't know whether you'll do this for me or not, uh, uh, you know, but I sure hope that you, you might think it'd be good to give me a little wisdom. That's not faith. That's not faith. Faith is always certain of the outcome even before it has the outcome. And so you'd say, Lord, I ask for wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. And as Jesus said, I believe, I receive when I pray. And so therefore, I thank you for the wisdom that you're giving me so I can do the right thing now so that in the end, I'll look back and say, I'm, I was a wise person. Okay, that's what faith says. But anytime you say, if it be thy will, I mean, can you, can you imagine saying that after reading this? Now, Lord, you said in your word that if anyone lacks wisdom, I should ask of you and you will give it to me. And so if it is your will, so let me paraphrase that. If you were lying or if you were not lying, if you weren't lying about it, you know, that you would give it to me. Uh, so I'd like to have some. You understand, you, when we say, if it be thy will, regarding things that clearly are God's will, because we have a clear cut promise, we're, we're saying that he's a liar. He doesn't always tell the truth. He doesn't keep his promise. You know, Lord, if you want to keep your promise, uh, I'd like to ask you for a wisdom. What an insult. What an insult. That's not faith. So prayers and faith are expectant and confident. And um, where did James ever get this idea? I mean, what made him so sure that faith was such an important component? Well, goodness gracious, we read it in Matthew. Matthew, was it 21, 22? You know, Jesus said, everything you ask in prayer, believing you will receive, right? You know, and, and uh, you know, whatever, whatever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you will have them. Je Jesus clearly, you know, told us that faith is a component of getting our prayers answered. And James reiterates that here, you know, in verse number seven, for that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. So not only can you not get wisdom without faith, you can't get anything from the Lord without faith. Wow, this is worth, you know, just pausing and meditating on for a while because so many times we pray for things and always throw in that if it be thy will uh, when there's promises that we know what God's will is and so we're not praying in faith you know or other things that reveal our doubts and 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 so James said really you're 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 unstable if you're if you're you know, believing for a little while, then doubting, then believing again, then doubting, then believing again. Then that's the wave action, okay? The wave comes in, then it goes back out, <laughs> you know. So how are we going to be people of faith and be able to pray in faith? It only comes from the Word of God. This is the only place you can get the promises from, from your Bible. I'm pointing to my computer because I got a computer, a Bible on my laptop here. That's how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing 
and hearing by the word of God, we are told in, in Romans. Let him ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Okay, now we come to verse number nine. And again, I'm submitting to you that I don't think this is a new topic. It might be a new paragraph in your Bible, but it's still within the context of the trials that James' contemporary readers were facing. But the brother of humble circumstances is to glory in his high position, and the rich man is to glory in his humiliation because like flowering grass will pass away. So this is a trial, isn't it? When you find that you are of humble circumstance, that is, you're facing very meager rations. Um, you know, you're wondering whether you're going to make it day to day. And we can understand if, in fact, this epistle was penned after the persecution in connection with the martyrdom of Stephen, all these people who have been scattered about because of their faith in Christ have lost their homes, lost their jobs, and now probably the only thing they can find uh, for work is to, you know, work for the rich guys who own the land, and they can, you know, be the, the cultivators and the harvesters and so forth. And we'll read later on here in James' epistle that a lot of these rich guys who owned the land were ripping off their labors, hiring them, and then ultimately not paying them. And so that's a trial and gives you kind of a bad feeling towards the, the, the rich guys that own the land when you're out there, you know, whacking down his, harvesting his wheat for him. And then in the end, maybe he's not even paying you. Well, that's a trial, and it's all because you decided to follow Jesus. But James is saying, hey, here is the wise perspective, the eternal perspective. The brother of humble circumstance should look at it from a different position. He should glory in his high position. Why? Because he's in Christ. He knows the Lord. He's on the narrow road that leads to eternal life. His faith will pay off. All right? more about those rich guys. I'll see you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.